Anyway, I appreciate you being here. Let's hit the ground running this morning. Our studies have brought us to the Jordan River. Behind us lays the wilderness of sin, the Sinai Peninsula lays behind us. The problems of Egypt are gone. Before us lies a formidable river that is over a mile wide. Beyond that river is a land that God said, I'll give you. It's yours if you'll just cross it. And we find that that land is a productive land, a blessed land promised by the word of God. But we must act by faith to cross that river. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the day. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your precious, precious word. Thank you for each one that's come this way. Lord, I pray now that you would just get me out of the way and use me for your glory. Thank you so much for this church, the liberty that we have. I pray the Spirit of God would come by and bless us and teach us. May the Spirit of God be the teacher this morning and may the big preacher come by and get me out of the way. In Jesus' name, amen. The Spirit-filled life is a life beyond the Jordan River. The devil wants to keep you in the flesh so you will never do battle with him. Let me remind you, the Bible says that we have three enemies. We have the world, the flesh, and the devil. Let me give you something real important that will help you in these studies. When you get saved, you come out of the world. You have been given victory over the world when you get under the blood of Jesus Christ. When the children of Israel left the, uh, the nation of Egypt, they got under the blood of the Lamb and they got out of the world. Praise God, when you get saved, you get out of the world. You get the power to get out of the world. But the next thing you face is the wilderness of sin. And the wilderness of sin is a type of the flesh. And guess what happens? Most of us spend the rest of our Christian life running around in circles in the wilderness fighting the flesh, we never get to cross the Jordan and live a spirit-filled life where we fight the devil. And the devil loves to keep us in the wilderness, fighting constantly fighting our flesh, fighting our sinful desires, fighting our, our old man and our old lusts, and we never live that spirit-filled life because he knows the Christian who is in the Word of God, on their knees, serious about doing business with God and business for God, he, he's going to have to face them as an enemy. So he wants us constantly, don't miss this Christian, he wants us constantly battling ourselves so we never live a spirit-filled life and do battle with him. The world, the flesh and the devil. I, I want us as a church this morning and as individuals to cross the Jordan River. Stop fighting the flesh and start walking in the spirit of the living God. The people of Israel had gotten under the blood. They were saved, but they had not achieved a spirit-filled life. My prayer is that we will do that. The last words of Moses in Deuteronomy, he told the people of Israel, he said, I want you to, when you cross the Jordan River, Moses was looking by faith. He'd come through the Red Sea. He himself had wandered in the wilderness. And he told the people, when you cross the Jordan River, he said, I want you to raise some great stones. These were not the stones of memorial from the river, but these were great stones that should be erected. He said, I want you to erect these great stones on the other side and I want you to plaster them with plaster and he said I want you to write in that plaster very plainly the word of God hey when you come across the Jordan River let the word of God be etched into your heart for God has not written on tables of stone but God has written on fleshly tables of the heart it's not written with ink but it's written with the spirit of God Christian we ought to let God write his word on our heart and so he says, Moses says this, he goes on to say this in Deuteronomy 31. He said, and the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. So here's what he said. If God will go before you and he will not fail you and he will not forsake you, fear not, 
neither be dismayed. Don't have fear which grips the heart and dismay grips the mind. To be dismayed is to be confused in mind. And so he's giving them encouraging words of faith. Sarah herself. The Bible says that Sarah believed God and received strength to bear a child when she was 90 years old. And the Bible goes on and says, because she judged him faithful. Now you think about that. You say, Sarah judged God? She sure did. She discerned some things about God. And she judged him, but guess what she found? That he is faithful. Glory. And so, uh, David said this in Psalm 102 about writing plainly the word of God. He says, Thus shall be written for the generation to come, and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. Did you get that? The people that shall be created. You know what I think we ought to do? We ought to raise up some memorials for the future generation. Do you realize that every church is one generation from closing its doors? Let that sink in. Every church, let me read you a quote. Every church is one generation for, from closing its door. 4,000 churches a year close their doors. If we don't pass along the faith to the rising generation, we have failed in our most important task. That's why Brother Brian is so, uh, uh, he places such an emphasis on the youth and getting our teens rooted and grounded in the Word of God. It is, it is an important task to tell them again and again about the Lord Jesus Christ, about the way of the cross, about the Christian life that gives us a victorious life over the world, the flesh, and the devil. Number one, we said if we're going to cross the Jordan River, we're going to have to face the problem. You cannot cross the river backwards. You have to face the problem. The, Paul tells the Hebrews in Hebrews chapter number 10, he says, Cast not away your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Your confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the Word of God, in what God said He will do. Your confidence in that, it's, he said, pays a recompense of reward, or in other words, it gives eternal dividends. Amen. You want to invest and get the most for your money? Then invest some confidence and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and let it pay divine, eternal dividends. And, and he goes on to say this. Paul says this. He says, For ye have need of patience after you have done the will of God that ye might receive the promise. Did you hear that? After you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. The people had to wait until the priest's feet hit the Jordan River and the waters parted, the Bible says, hither and thither. And so they had to wait. Hey, they received the promise after they believed God. Remember, I'm going to repeat this from last week. Remember... The devil always exaggerates the problem. The devil is a liar and he is the father of, the li of lies. He will always exaggerate. He will always blow up. He will always puff up. Hey, friend, God always calms and reassures and gives the comfort of his presence. That's why walking in the Spirit of God is absolutely necessary for the Christian life so we don't live our lives always in anxiety and suffering these things of the flesh. So number one, we need to face the problem. Number two, give you this quickly, gave it to you last week, find the power. To find the power to face the problem. The power, listen to me carefully, is not in education. The power is not in intelligence. The power is not in academics or the textbooks. The power is in the scriptures, dear friend. The power is in the Spirit of God. You will fail if you listen to your academic teachers, friend, in the Spirit field life. You will fail. America's colleges are number one in leading young people astray and causing them to die the Word of God. Hey, get in the book, the book, the book of God. Amen. By the way, let me remind you that scientists are leaving Darwin. They're flocking away from Darwin. Where are they going, preacher? 
still not going to the Word of God. They claim there's a higher power. We're, we've been, uh, that, that some kind of intelligent being were out there and created us. Listen, you know what they're setting themselves up for? When they believe that, aliens and the Antichrist. I don't have time to go there. Let's move on. Find the power. Our Lord Jesus Christ accepted the challenge. He did not know. God did not know what it was like to walk in flesh. God did not know what it was like to be a man. In, in a way, uh, coming to the womb of the Virgin Mary was the Lord Jesus. Uh, that was his Jordan River. He had to cross over. He had to become flesh. And now we have a faithful and high priest that was made like as unto we are, yet without sin. The Lord Jesus Christ accepted the challenge. He had never dealt with a, a fleshly body, yet he became Jesus the, the correct pronunciation for Jesus is Yeshua. Joshua, you can tell the, the closeness of the, the speech. Yeshua, Joshua, the deliverer. I'm glad I know the deliverer this morning who delivers from sin, who delivers from flesh, and who delivers from the devil. He says this, in the world you shall have tribulation. Hey, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world, praise God. And so our Lord Jesus Christ finds the power. You know what he was? he was? He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of the devil. Where did he find the power? Just like Jesus was in the wilderness 40 days, so the children of Israel were in the wilderness 40 years. The Lord Jesus Christ found the power of God in prayer and fasting. Let me ask you a question. Are you serious enough about your Christian life and about doing the will of God to pray? Are you serious enough to add fasting to your prayer? Amen, preacher. Oh, that don't go over good with Baptists. We like to roll out the grill, don't we? Praise God. But listen, I've often said before, some of you are new. Instead of Grocer's Creek, we're Grocery Creek, praise God. We're not Southern Baptists, we're Southern Fried Baptists. But listen, hey, is there, there ought to be times, listen, sometimes your body will tell you, hey, you don't need food today. Amen. Are you listening? You, I mean, sometimes it's just, you just don't have that appetite. You know what that is? That may be God saying, hey, why don't you fast this meal? Why don't you fast this day? Why don't you spend this time in prayer? Amen. Deny yourself a little bit. Won't hurt you. Now, unless you've got a medical condition, praise God. Sometimes I come home from work and I'm short on uh, blood sugar. I'm pretty ill. But listen, you get past that point when you fast. I don't have time to preach on fast. Here we go. So Jesus had, listen, he tapped into the resources. When you face the problems of life, do you face them with the power of God or do you face them by turning everywhere but the word of God and the answer that God can give you in prayer? God has the resources if we will just fast and pray, if we'll just seek the favor of God and seek the will of God. Listen to what Paul tells the Galatians. I say this then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusts us against the spirit and the spirit lusts us against the flesh. And and these are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Hey, you'll find the, the power to overcome any problem in, in, in the scripture, any obstacle in the spirit of God. And that power lies in our risen Savior. Number three, let's hit some new ground. Follow the providence of God. Chapter number three. <clears throat> Excuse me. Joshua chapter 3. I had you to turn there and didn't go myself. Joshua chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. And as they that bear the ark were come to the Jordan, and, and, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped into the brim of the water, for Jordan hath overflown all its banks all the time of harvest, that the waters which came down from above and stood and rose up on heap very far from the city Adam, that is beside Zeretan, and those that came down toward the Sea of the Plain, even the Salt Sea failed and were cut off, and the people passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Let me give you something right off the bat. Sometimes when you face a new problem in life, 
If you go on by faith, if you'll follow the providence, which is point number three, find, uh, face the problem, find the power. Point number three, write this down, follow the providence of God. They had to follow the ark across the Jordan River following the providence of God. Sometimes when you come to a new trial in your life, it may mean, listen very carefully, that the old problem is past. God says, I mean, sometimes we feel overwhelmed. Lord, I'm facing a new problem, and I've not solved the old problem. And God may just be at the point to say, hey, you go forward with me. You follow the ark, which is the type of the Lord Jesus Christ. You go on, and I'll take care of that old problem and give you the strength to face this new problem. No, what we most of the time do, instead of going on and tackling the new problem, we want to turn around and say, well, we, we, we can't go on till we resolve this. Hey, it may be that God's calling you to cross on over. See, once they crossed over, behind is the wilderness of sin. Behind is the, the bread and the manna uh, and the quail. Behind is all those funerals that they had. Behind is all that, that wandering around. That Hey, that's all gone. Now they have a new land. Yes, they face new problems. They face new challenges but they have a refreshed spirit. Amen. Paul said this in Philippians 3, 13, Beloved, I count not myself to have apprehended, but he said, This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and pressing toward those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hey, friend, if Jesus Christ, if, the, if these people follow him through the, by the ark, through the uh, Jordan River, hey, follow the Lord Jesus Christ wherever he goes. He'll never lead you astray. The world will lead you astray. The, the, death, uh, the devil will lead you astray. The flesh will lead you astray. But I promise you on the authority of the word of God and the experience of your pastor that the Lord Jesus Christ will never lead you astray. So Christ, Christ is going through the Jordan. Hey, friend, follow him. If there's giants on the other side, follow him. If there's problems and challenges on the other side, follow him. Sarah, the Bible says, judged him. We spoke at the beginning. Sarah judged him, judged him to be faithful. And what happened to her? Hey, she had a baby. Her flesh had not been, for 90 years, her flesh had not been successful. For 90 years, her husband had not been successful. But for all at all once, she believed God, and God gave her the strength and the power to face the challenges and to have that child. She even named him Isaac, which was laughter. You see, that's not a good kind of laughter. She kind of laughed at God. When God said she'd have a baby, she said, huh, me? No. But she found the faith. Because she judged him faithful. Amen. God had told Joshua, not only had Moses encouraged Joshua, but God had encouraged Joshua. You don't have to turn there. This is Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, neither be afraid, neither be doubt dismayed? Sounds like God saying the thing Moses, God saying the same thing Moses already said. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. The Lord thy God is with thee. Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. This is the Lord thy God, Jehovah thy Elohim. This is the God of the Old Testament. This is the God of the ark. This is the God that got the people under the blood. Hey, this is the God who created the earth and the worlds that there be. Hey, this is the God that parted the Red Sea when most of these people were in the womb of their parents or in their mother's womb. God had done all these things, and he's the God that says, press forward. Like the Apostle Paul, I say to you, church, this morning, press forward. Forward, forget those things which are behind. Forget making memorials to sin. Press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Excuse me. Joshua said, look at it in 3.10. This is going to be a sign for you. And Joshua said, hereby shall you know that the living God is among you. And he that without fail will drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites. He says, if God can part the water, he'll have no problem with what's on the other side of the river. If God can let you walk across on dry ground, 
Let the Hivites come. Hey, he's bigger than the Hivites. He's bigger than the Canaanites. He's better than the Jebusites. Amen. I'm running out of ites. I don't know how many's left. Hey, where's your confidence this morning? It has great recompense of reward. No, we are not to hurry, but we're not to hesitate. Most of us, when we face the Jordan River, we either get ahead of God or we get behind God. That's why Paul tells us to walk in the Spirit. The Spirit not only leads us to the right place, but the Spirit leads us in the right time. Amen. He leads us in the right time. Don't hurry, but don't hesitate. The waters are there. But I want you to hear what Jeremiah says. He said, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God. Then I want you to see point number four as we move quickly through. Point number four, let's go to chapter four and verse number one. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake to Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men of the people out of every tribe a man, and command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, and out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones. And ye shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. And Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord, before your, uh, your God in the midst of Jordan, and take you up every man of you a, sh- a stone, watch this, on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, Here's our youth emphasis. That this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off from before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial of the children unto the children of Israel forever. That the fourth point I want to give you is fix a position. Follow the providence of God, but fix a position. Joshua said, go get 12 stones. Don't get those 12 stones from the other side of the bank. Don't get them from this side of the bank. I want you to go right out into the middle of the river, and every man of the 12 tribes, I want you to get a stone, and the stone would be big enough so they could put it on a shoulder, but, on, but small enough so one man could carry one per tribe. Let me remind you of something, Christian. Most of your miracles come in little things that add up. Amen. Twelve stones. These were not the great stones that I mentioned at the first of the message, which were to be plastered and written on the Word of God. These were just twelve small stones, big enough for a man to carry and get it out of the middle of the river and put it on the other side of Jordan. Hey, you know what you ought to do, Christian? You ought to raise up some memorials to the victories that you've had in life. You ought to keep a prayer journal and just see. I'll guarantee you it will be remarkable if you'll write down some prayer requests and and keep a prayer journal and go back and see what God has done in your life. Raise up some stones and put some monuments down. Make some memorials to the victories of God. Those little things add up in your life. Bring those stones right out of the middle of the river. Amen. Don't go back to the wilderness and grab stones and set them up for a memorial. You know what I've seen some people do? I've seen some people get saved and they come out of Egypt, they get in the wilderness and they live in sin and when they, when they finally start living a spirit-filled life, they begin to talk about the things they used to do. Hey, friend, leave those things behind. Don't make a memorial of the things you used to do. Amen, preacher. 
And it's not long before they begin to make a memorial of the things they used to do that they're back out into those same things. Hey, I say go through the Jordan River, pick you up some stones, uh, put them on the other side, praise God, and make a memorial and say, it's there where our feet tread the Jordan River. It's there where we watch the ancient river overflow. But God parted it hither and thither. It's there that we won the victory. It's there that God promised he would drive out from before us our enemies. It's there where I got the victory. Let me ask you a question. Is there a time in your life this morning where you bowed down and called on the Lord Jesus Christ? Is there a time in your life that you can say, I've got a memorial of that day when I called on the Lord Jesus? I never will forget when I was a little boy and I got saved. Mama gave me a little Bible, a little New Testament, you know. And she said, I want you to go right in that, in, in that little book, that little New Testament, the day you got saved. I still have it. Almost 50 years ago, I still have it. I can still tell you the day. I can remember the day. I can tell you where I bowed down. I know the day. I've got a memorial and I know the day when I got under the precious blood of the Lamb of God. What a blessing. And so, verse number 9, I want you to see something here. Chapter number 4. And Joshua said, set up 12 stones uh, out of the, in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priest stood, or which bear the ark of the covenant stood. And there they are, the Bible says, uh, unto uh, this day. These stones are a witness to the people of that time, but they are a witness to the people of that which shall be born, as David said in Psalm 102. These, so these stones, now let me slow down here, I'll close the message. These stones were not stones of power. There was not some magical power in them. They were stones of memorial. I remember, and I think I've told you this story several years ago. Uh, I, I, a young man got a, a temporary job where I work. And he said, the preacher preached a message like this. And he told everybody to go out, small church. He told everybody to go out in the parking lot and pick them up a gravel out of the parking lot. And they was going to make a prayer request over that little gravel. And he said, i tell you what I did. I picked up that gravel. And he said, I pointed it toward this power plant. And he said, uh, I got a job. I said, I don't believe I put much confidence in a gravel. Amen. I don't believe, I said, I believe I put my confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, you don't need some kind of a good luck charm, Christian. Amen. You don't need a cross around your neck. Amen, preacher. You don't need a picture of, the, of Christ. Amen. You need the Lord Jesus Christ dwelling on the inside and the Spirit of God building up your heart and your knowledge of the Word of God is what you need. Amen. By the way, he got a temporary job and it wasn't very long that he was gone. You know what God does? God don't work on a temporary basis. Amen. When he does something, he does it eternal. These are not stones of power. They're stones of memorial amen the bible said you've not passed this way before but god brought you through now don't forget that the god of the unknown brought you where you had no clue you were going he's not the unknown god but he is the god of the unknown hey i don't know where tomorrow will lead me i don't know where this evening will lead this evening will lead me I have no clue what will happen five minutes from now, but I know the God who knows tomorrow. I know the God who already knows what's on the other side of the river. Matter of fact, he not only knows what's on the other side of the river, he knows what's in the river. And he says, when you go through it, pick up some stones and put them out on the other side. Our Lord has opened up the way on the cross of Calvary. He's parted our waters for us. Amen. It's not up to us to swim the river. You won't make it. It's not up to us to walk across the river on the bottom with the waters over top. I knew a guy who fell out of a boat at the lake one time. And he couldn't swim. And he finally came out on the other side. And somebody said, man, 
I thought you were going to drown. He said, no way, buddy. He said, every time I hit the bottom, I took off running. <laughs> May I remind you, you will not spiritually cross the Jordan River on your own power and in your own strength. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not cross over. Amen. And so I want to give you the last one quickly. The future's positive. The land opens up before them. The land was fertile, flowing with milk and honey. It's opposite of the desert. There are new opportunities. There's a fresh start. There's new hope. The only thing they need to look back and see is the 12 stones of memorial and say that's as far back as we need to see right now. Our God's going to move before us. And he said it's for a sign for the future generation. For the future generation. When they ask you, how'd you get here? You've got something to go back and say right there. May I say to you this morning, our future generations need this right here. They need this book. They need it taught them. They need it lived in front of them. Sometimes the only Bible they'll ever read is your life. Remember, every church is one generation from closing its door. Wow. I want you to look at Joshua 4 and verse number 24, and this will be the last. Why did God do this? A witness. A witness. That all the people of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that ye might fear the Lord your God forever. Two reasons God did this. For a sign for the future generation and for a testimony to the world. If you could narrow the work of this church down to two things. Our church is here to be a lighthouse in this community of the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, we're here to train up our children in the way they should go. Amen.